All right, Shabbat Shalom, Miss Bakai. This is Midday Yahoo Ben Yashriel broadcasting to you live from live stream. You're with Living Branch Hebrew Assembly. And once again, we are glad to be able to come in your midst and into your house, into your ba'et or bet, and just share and fellowship with you. And we're just honored that the Father has given us the opportunity. We don't take this lightly. It's not that we have done anything great, but the Father has afforded us just the opportunity to be able to share and to be a part of, of your life. Now, once again, you're with Living Branch Hebrew Assembly. So you can contact us if you want to contact us on the web. This is how you contact us. So I'm going to have my assistant, um, Bina, to give us our website address. www.living-branch.org Okay. Try one more time. www.living-branch.org All right. She did it with a smile. And that makes the difference. So we were just discussing before we came on. That's why we were just a few minutes late. When you do things with a smile, how your audience can hear that you're smiling. So not only can a smile be seen, a smile can be heard. So next we're going to have our email address and we're going to have Kiki give us our email address if you have a prayer request. Prayer at living branch dot org. Amen. So we're reaching out globally trying to help the lost sheep of the house of Yasriel. And the Father has given me a, uh, I would say, a special calling or initiative. And that's what tonight's lesson is going to focus on. We're going to have uh, lesson one of prophets and seers. Prophet seer. And this is just more or less an introductory. It's not a long lesson, but it's very informative. Trust me, it's going to be very informative. And what we're going to do, we're going to pray and go forward. We're going to ask everyone, if you're, if you're at home and you're getting ready to uh, join us, grab your scripture, your Bible, whatever you call your study tool. Grab it so that we can go into the scripture. All right, let's pray, Miss Baka. Baruch Hashem Yahuwah Elohinu Malak HaAlam. Father, we're thankful for another day. And we just bless your name, Yahuwah. And we are thankful that you are our king. And we ask you, Father, to come into the midst. Give us instruction. Help us to understand. Help us to be and abide in the callings that you have called us to be in. And I pray, Father, you give us revelation and insight. I pray, Father, this lesson would be a lesson to help, to inspire, to comfort those, Father, that are called to be prophets and seers. And even, Father, those that might operate in the prophetic that might give them direction also. Father, show us the, the mysteries of your scripture because the hidden things you have kept for us because you, Father, have are where we abide. We abide under the shadow of the Almighty, and we thank you now. We say Toda in the name of Mashiach Yahusha Halel to Yahuwah. Amen. So let's grab our scriptures. And tonight's lesson, like I said, is on Prophet and Seers, lesson one. And this all came about. Let me just give you a, a, a short synopsis. When I was growing up, I can remember having dreams and not fully understanding. Even when um, I was just a young man having dreams and, you know, um, just seeking the Father, not fully understanding what I was seeking or asking. I can recall even as a young, young fella. I use that word. We ain't heard that one in a long time. I was a young fella. And in order to see if I was doing right or wrong, I would always go to Exodus 20 
And Exodus 20 is where the commandments, you find the, the Deborim, the, the 10 words. And I would go there and I would compare what I was doing to those scriptures. Little did I know, after, after numerous years, the Father would bring me back to honoring and obeying his commandments and his statutes, precepts, and judgments. Whereas, as I was growing up and over time, you get the thought that they're done away with. But his word stands forever. And not one jot or tittle will pass away. So he brought me back to that. And then he started in the midst of that to help me to understand that I had a uh, call uh, of of a prophet seer dreamer on my life and I sat under uh, different people to help me develop to different points and humbly the father has has enlightened me so that I can help others because sometimes it can when you have certain when you have certain callings and when you um, you can feel that you're out there by yourself because the recognition it's not always there with people and you have to rely totally on the father so we're going to look at some things here today and I'm trust me some of it's going to be eye-opening it was to me at least so we're going to go to the first place that I think is crucial let's go to first Samuel and that's in the that's in the Tanakh which is the Tanakh is your Old Testament, the Torah, Prophets, and Writings. 1 Samuel, the ninth chapter and the ninth verse. There's two words we're going to see here. And we're going to get some information. Then we're going to carry it from there. So I'm going to ask my Isha if she would read 1 Samuel chapter 9. Verse 9. Now she'll be reading from the scripture, but what I have displayed is from the King James Version. Formerly in Israel, when a man went to inquire of Elohim, he spoke thus, Come let us go to the seer. For the prophet of today was formerly called a seer. Okay, now did you catch that? It said the prophet of today was formerly called a seer. Okay, I want you to hold on to that. Seer, right here you can see, is Hebrew. Uh, the Hebrew number is 7200. Uh, okay, 7200. That's what a seer. The Hebrew for prophet is 5030. If you were to look that up in the Strong's Concordance. Okay, so what's called a prophet was formerly called a seer. That's going to be crucial to our understanding. Okay. Now, what is, let's deal with seer. The word there for seer is ra'ah. It is a root word. So from that word, other words are formed. It means to see. Okay, so as humans, what do we see with? What do we see with? Eyes. Our eyes. Now, you might not know this, but the picture that your eyes see out here is upside down. When it goes into your eyes, your eyes flips it so that it's right so it's right side up. That's just I just thought I'd throw that in there. So Ra'a, or if you went to that particular scripture where it has that word there, it'll have a hey. The word hey means behold. Hey in Hebrew is the see or the seer. Okay, hold on to this. Now, let's keep going. The word seer. Now, this could be, let's, let's, let me take you back. It could be figuratively or literally, and it does have many applications. OK, 
okay, is made up of three Hebrew letters. Resh, Olive, Hey, say them with me. Resh, Olive, olive Hey. Okay, now the Resh means your head. Okay, first or most important. Now, if you were to look it up in the Hebrew word picture, it means head. The olive means teach, strong, or all, or L. The Hebrew word picture is the olive. The ancient picture was a ox. And when you say hey, hey means behold. There you go, Bina. It means behold. Reveal or mercy. Now, I find it interesting in the uh, Hebrew word picture, it was what comes from. So if we were to take the letters, now what you have to do, you take the outside letters, you do the first letter, the last letter, and then you come to the inside letter and you describe what that word means. That's a pictographic meaning. Now I'm going to give you what the Hebrew word picture was. Out of the strength of the head. That's what ra'a means. Out of the strength of the head. Or you could say the head, the first or most important. Behold, reveal, teaching or strength or strong. So, we're going to see this. Keep this in mind. This involves something that comes from a head that we have to behold that teaches us. Okay? It comes from a head. Now, when you think of a head, the head, the head of a house. Okay? The head of a house. So let's keep moving. Now the word for prophet is Nabi. Nabi. Now if you remember in um, what was that that um, picture, that movie that had um, uh, man, it was a good movie too and I, I like it had the man that went, they went to this faraway planet and in that planet on that planet they were mining stuff and he um, would get into this contraption and he was able to control this other body and they were tall they were like way taller than the humans it'll come to me in a minute it'll come to me in a minute and they would fly around on the bird and at the end he had this big bird I'm surprised my girls don't know that. It, uh, it just came, it came out maybe four or five years ago. So, this word was actually used in that picture to describe those people. Nabi. Now, Nabi is a prophet or generally inspired man. And it could be also used as prophecy that prophesies a prophet. Now, it comes from the root word, which is naba, which is a root word where other words come from. It means to prophesy, to speak by inspiration in prediction or simple discourse. But remember, before they were called prophets, they were called what? Seers. Okay, remember that's what we read in First Samuel nine, chapter nine, verse nine. They were called what? Seers. Seers. Now, what is the? I'm gonna give you the picture graph for a prophet. The first letter is noon. Means to continue eternal life or fish. The second letter is bet. Where's the better picture of? 
A door. A house. That's a dollar. That was close. A house. Or it means in. Then there's the yo. What is the picture of a yo? A, a hand. A hand. It means to work or activity. Then this one you should know. An olive. A bull or an oxen or an ox. Ox. And it means teach, strong, all or L. So if you looked at this, continue, strong, or teach house work. So if you remember, the prophets, especially the, the, when we see them, they were trying to teach Israel because Israel backslid. And what they were trying to do is point Israel back to the Shabbat and keeping his commandments, his statutes, and judgments. So all through all of the prophets, you see this. Because Israel lost their way because they sinned and they continually sin. And these prophets were to continue the strong teaching of the house. Or continue the strong, uh, excuse me, continue the teaching house work or activity or hand. They had a job, trust me, because Israel was a rebellious people. Now, the root word which we talk, talked about is a noon which means continue, eternal, life, or fish. A bet. What was a bet? It was a house. It was a house, and it means in. Mm -hmm. And we had olive. What was an olive? An ox. An ox. That means to teach of strong. To continue strong house or continue to teach house. Now, let's look at something. What we're going to do, we're going to take the word seer. Or the word, the Hebrew word ra'ah, and we're going to find the first place that is mentioned in scripture. Where do you think that might be? Where? Genesis. Genesis or Bereshit. That's the word for Genesis. That's the Hebrew. So we're going to Genesis chapter 1, verse 4. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to ask my Isha to read that, if she would. And Elohim saw the light, that it was good. And Elohim separated the light from the darkness. So this word that's used of seer was first used of Elohim. And notice what he said. And Elohim saw, that's the word ra'ah, the light. Now, what's the light in, what's the light, um, when we talk about light, what's supposed to be our light? Where is our light? His the word, light. there you go, give, come here, give me a high five. The word is a light, is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. So that light, and let me just, because some people might want to know where they can go. Um, that's Psalms 119, verse 105. Thy word. See, now this could be your scripture that you remember, because this is a good one to remember. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. And a light unto my path. Thy word. So. Now what did he call the light? When he saw the light. Because now we. Because this is going to help us build. The character of what a seer. Is supposed to. Um. Uh, one of the sources and how they're supposed to see. 
He said that the light was good. Good. That word there, good, is tob. Modern Hebrew, tob. But tob, ancient. Or tuba. Okay. He said it was good. Now, I want you to notice every place that we're going to go to in Genesis or Bereshit, you're going to see the word after C, good. He's always going to talk about C and good. Okay. Read for me Genesis chapter 1 verse 9. And Elohim said, Let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it came to be so. Okay, verse 10. And Elohim called the dry land earth, and the collection of the waters he called seas. And Elohim saw that it was good. Now, in verse 9, that word appear is the word to see. Ra'ah. Now, I want you to notice, he didn't, at that point, he didn't say anything about good. But when he gathered together the waters and called the sea, that word saw there, Elohim saw that it was good. So here we have saw and good together again. Okay, let's read verse 12. And the earth brought forth grass, the plants that yields seeds according to its kind, and the trees that yield fruit, whose seeds, whose seed is in itself according to its kind. And Elohim said that it was good. Okay. Now the King James has said Elohim saw that it was good. Okay. So we have saw and good again. So every time, just about every time you're seeing Saul, you're seeing what? Good. Tob. Okay. Read verse 18. And to rule. Oh. Yeah. And to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And Elohim saw that it was good. Okay, so the previous verse talks about he made the sun and the stars. And isn't that what it says? Mm -hmm. Okay, and the sun rules over the what? The day. And the stars rule over the night. And he divided the light from the darkness. And Elohim saw that it was good. Or what? Tob. All right. Go to verse 21. And Elohim created great sea creatures and every living being that moves with which the waters, the waters teemed according to their kind. And every winged bird according to its kind and Elohim saw that it was good okay here you Elohim saw he made the whales and the living creatures that move in the water and the wing fowl and after he finished he saw that it was told good okay verse 25 and Elohim made the the beasts of the earth according to its kind livestock according to its kind and all that creep on the earth according to its kind and Elohim saw that it was good so here we have again the word Ra'ah saw and good come together verse 31 and Elohim saw all that he had made and see it was very good and there came to be evening and there came to be morning the sixth day now he looked and saw everything he had made and behold he didn't just say it was good he said very good which is which in hebrew is tob miyot tomiyot 
That means very good. Now, I want you to really pay attention to the next verse because this is the first verse that this word ra'a is used of someone outside of Allahim in scripture. And I want you to notice what he did. Okay, read, go to chapter 2, verse 19. And from the ground Yahuwah Elohim formed every beast of the fields and every bird of the heavens and brought them to the sun to see what, oh sorry, brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called each living being was its name. Okay, now, I don't know if you caught it. So Elohim brought, or Elohim brought every beast of the field and every fowl of the air. He brought to Adam to see what he would call it. And whatsoever he called it, uh, and whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. So in order for him to call it a name, he had to see it. So he, if you look at some of the names of creatures, those names were derived from Adam. And he gave those names according to the characteristic of the creature. So he had to have that insight. To that knowing that only comes from the Father. And the way he got that is by following the Father's instructions. The father then, when the father brought it to him, he's like, oh, I ain't going to name him. I'd name him another day. No, he followed the father's instructions. But something went wrong. Their source for food. Now, what commandment did the father give Adam? You remember? He said, every tree in the garden you can eat freely of, but not of the tree of what? Life with knowledge and the tree of knowledge, good and evil. Yep, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But the tree of life that was in the garden, they could eat freely of in every herb. So go to Genesis chapter 3, Bereshit chapter 3, verse 6. Now, this is the first place that is, that is used, Ra'a is used with uh, a woman. Go ahead. And the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and the tree desirable to make one wise. And she took of its fruit and ate. And she also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. Now, here you see the word ra'a, which is the word for seer, and also to see, is used... And Satan, Hasatan, had seduced or beguiled, as, as she put it, in English, of course, her to use a different food source other than what the father had commanded. And her husband was... In agreement with her and why when I said he was in agreement with her because he was right there and he turned in eight too so your food source can determine how you see your food source can determine how you see now go back over to Genesis chapter 2 verse 16 and Yahuwah Elohim commanded the man, saying, Eat of every tree of the garden, but do not eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall certainly die. 
<laughs> okay, so the father gave him, he told him he could eat freely of everything that was in the garden. And we're going to talk about what he could eat. But there was one thing he couldn't eat. And that one thing he couldn't eat had a mixture in it. It was the tree of what? Knowledge. Good, the knowledge of good and evil. evil. So the father doesn't like mixed things. So Hasatan was able to change their food source from what the father commanded to his food source. Sometimes people can do things that are good, but what they're doing good is not based on what the father has said. They still mix, have a mixture there because they're not attributing to the father. You know, you, you can have people that are morally good, but they give no credit saying that this is the source of why I do good. The commandments, his statutes, precepts and judgments. Now, let's go and look at this source of food. Let's go back over to Genesis chapter one. Verse twenty nine. And Elohim said, See, I have given you every plant that yields seeds, which is on the face of all the earth, and every tree whose fruit yields seed. To you it is all for food. Okay. Now, he said, Elohim said, Behold, I give unto you every herb. That's the King James. Now, the word for herb here, is e uh excuse me is e sab which means a glisten green or grass now what i'm interested in this word is the picture graphic and this is how this is what the ion means what what does the ion mean i i the sheen means teeth teeth and what's the bet? Son or the father? The house. The house. The house. So when you look at this picture graphically, the herb is understand what the house consumes. Understand what the house consumes. So when he gave us the herb, he gave us an understanding of what we could consume being in his house. So you can't eat any and everything in his house. Just like you can't associate with any and everyone being in his house. Remember he talks, talks about what fellowship has light with darkness. So you have to understand if you're walking in the light in his commandments and statutes and precept, um, precepts, what fellowship do you have with those that walk in darkness? You know, sometimes people want the best of both worlds, but I'm sorry, you can't have it. You either going to walk with him in the light or you're going to walk in darkness. You can't walk in both. So can we eat everything, Kira? Would you like to have a clam sandwich? No, thank you. No, thank you. That's how that's what you're supposed to say. In the Father's house, what are we supposed to consume? The tree of life is his word. This is what we eat. But Hasatan, if we go back, he was able to change that concept for Kawa and for Adam or Eve and Adam. By changing their food source. Because it says in verse 6. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food. For food. He changed their source of food. They were supposed to they could eat freely. And they could eat of the tree of life. But this mixture the father said no. So what Hasatan wants to do is to change your source of food. And what he does, he gives you a little bit of the commandments. 
some of the father's statutes, but he mix it in sometimes with he can stir up your feelings, your emotions, and how you think. And now you're mixing that all in with the commandments. Now, that's not totally the father's food. The father's food is pure, is unadulterated, there's not it's not tainted. There's no opinion in it. It's what it is. So, what did we say herb meant? Understand what the house consumes. He gave us that understanding. And this word ra'a was first used of seer. And lessons that are, um, that we're going to do here in the future, he challenges those that are seers, that are prophets or prophetess and dreamers. And he even challenged the people that if someone comes to you and give a word, they are prophet and they give a word, but don't follow his commandments, then you're not supposed to follow them. If they come secretly and they're not following these commandments and statutes, then I don't care what kind of word they're giving. You know, we're supposed to adhere to the commandments. They're not supposed to be able to lure us off somewhere else. Now let's look at the pro where prophet is first used. Nabi. Who do you think might have been the first prophet? Who's the father of faith? Who's the father of our faith? That everybody goes back and refers to. Mm -hmm. They talk about they talk about Yaakov Abraham. or Jacob. Abraham, that's right. Abraham. They talk about Yitzhak, Isaac. But Abraham started all of this when the father called him out. Yes. Well, we're going to read that. And if you want to um, do a little extra studying, which I think it'll bless your soul, you can go over to where and start reading in Genesis. Um, just want to make sure. In the, you can start and read the 11th chapter. It talks about the different, um, we won't do it today. But it talks about, down in the 27th verse, about Terah and his descendants. And it mentions Noah. Then when you go over to the 12th chapter, it talks about Noah, uh, about the father, Yahuwah, calling Noah, uh, Abraham, excuse me, out of his country and from his kindred. Now notice what, he, what the father did. 12th chapter, first verse. Now Yahuwah said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show you. He forsook all. Friends, everything. Got to go. Sorry. Father calling me. I ain't got time. Family. He took Lot with him, which was his nephew. Some places you'll see it says brother, but you'll find that that was his nephew. That they used that in ancient times. Certain people they were called nieces and nephews. They called them brothers and sisters. And he followed the father. So let's go and look what the father said of Abraham. Let's look at um, where he's first called this in Genesis the twentieth chapter and seventh verse. And now return the man's wife, for he is a prophet, and let him pray for you, and you live. But if you do not return her, know that you shall certainly die. Now you, who? Okay, was that the whole verse? You and all of yours. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Read it one more time for us. Sorry. And now return the man's wife. For he is a prophet, and let him pray for you, and you live. But if you do not return her, 
know that you shall certainly die, you and all that are yours. So the father called him a prophet. And one of the key things was that this prophet, Abraham, was able to pray for them and they did and they live. But if he didn't, they would die. So let's look at one of look at some of the characteristics of Abraham, which made made him a powerful prophet. Now you know he called on the name Yahuwah. And we're going to be doing some subsequent lessons on the name Yahuwah to hopefully simplify it for you. So many are searching. Uh, they're calling the Father everything. I used to call him everything. And, and the Father led me and showed me. Um, you know, I've been through the Lord. I've been through the Lord God. I've been through Yahweh. I've been through Jehovah. Then finally the Father planted my feet in Yahuwah and Yahusha. And he confirmed it to me with dreams. Using those names. That there were no greater names. So let's look at Genesis the 18th chapter and 19th verse. For I have known him so that he commands his children and his household after him to guard the way of Yahuwah, to do righteousness and right ruling. So that Yahuwah brings to Abraham what he has spoken to him. So this is the father talking about Abraham. That he know he will command his children, his household after him. And keep, his, and keep the way of Yahuwah, do justice and judgment. Then Yahuwah will bring the blessings, uh, the things he has spoken about him. And he said, through Abraham, many nations shall be blessed. Then you go to Genesis, the 26th chapter, in the 5th verse. What does it say? Because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. Now, listen here. Some things the Father will speak to you directly. He spoke to Abraham and told him to come out from among his kindred, from among the country people and he obeyed that voice and he kept his charge he kept his commandments his statutes and his laws this is what the father said of Abraham so one of the characteristics of if a seer prophet you have to be obedient to his voice keep his charge keep his commandments keep his statutes keep his laws and you have to command your household and your children after him to keep his ways. This is what the father is looking for. So I hope you get some insight as far as the word seer is first used of Elohim. Everything he saw was good or to see. Then he's used of Adam when he named the creatures. He still was in a in a good state of purity with Elohim. And through that he was able to see and to name these creatures. But then the food source changed in Genesis of Bereshit chapter 3 verse 6. They no longer saw the food source that the father had given them they wanted to go and get this other food source that was presented to them and they saw it was good for food so you cannot as a seer a prophet or dreamer mix the father's food source with the government you can't mix it with political opinion you can't mix it with all these other things. The Father's soup food source stands alone. So if you're going to do something, you have to do it according 
to what his food source. That's why I'm excited about tomorrow's lesson because we're going to be talking about uh, we're going to be in the book of Numbers or Bemidbar and we're going to study about like in the middle remember at the garden he put up two cherubims to guard the way and then he took his food source and put it on a mountain in the middle of a wilderness or desert and now we can access that food source his commandments in the middle of our desert and be obedient yes ma'am that is what we're going to talk about because the word be and we'll talk about it on tomorrow comes from the word for Debar comes from the Hebrew word Debar, which means the word. So, this is what's exciting. Keep your food source in the word of Elohim. Follow him diligently. Forsake all for him. Because in these last days, we've got to be willing to cleave to him. Because he's the only one that's going to be able to save and deliver us. So I want to pray for all the prophets and seers and prophetess and dreamers out there. Father, I pray encouragement to those that are operating as a prophet, a seer, a dreamer. Father, just have a uh, prophetic spirit upon them because of the Ruach HaKodesh. Give them encouragement. See, let them see, Father, that they can only have one food source. They're one food source that they utter and that they repeat constantly and that they adhere to and that they proclaim to others and use as a point of reference has to be Torah. And that Torah will be witnessed by the prophets in the writings and also witnessed by the Brit Hadashah, the New Testament. Father, give them the courage. Give them the strength to speak a word in season and out of season. Teach them, Father, when the word is to be held. Teach them when the word is supposed to be released. And I pray, Father, that you would give them encouragement. Father, to walk in the calling that you have given them in that office. Do it right now that they, Father, will be encouraged. In the name of Messiah, Yahusha, Hallel to Yahuwah. Amen. Amen. So just a little bit about our bookmark witnessing program. If you are interested in getting some bookmarkers, here are the examples right here. You can log on to our website, www.bm.hebrewfoundation.org or you can email us at bookmark at living-branch.org. Now here are some resources. I always put these up here. Um, you can go to our YouTube page right here and we also have an uh, excellent blog on the Hebrew Foundation and this is the Living Branch website living-branch.org that Bina gave us and also uh, our friend and partner in the ministry um, uh, Maury Lamad Yahoo the path to Yahuwah.com so if you would like to uh, help us in our mission uh, hey <laughs> nothing these days runs for free so you know we do absorb costs we don't complain we send out the bookmarkers but it does cost to produce bookmarkers it does cost to mail them out and father puts it on your heart to be a help to us then by all means go to our website and click on online giving so this is our prayer and prophecy night we did our first lesson on uh, prophet seer lesson one if you have any questions, you can email me at prayer at living-branch.org and I'll be happy to answer your questions and if I don't know an answer or if it's in something that I can't give a definite answer to, I will let you know and do my best of my ability to um, help you navigate your question. All righty, Ms. Baca, we know the Shabbat will be setting in, so prepare your house. Be ready for when the Shabbat comes in. 
and we're thankful for another Shabbat and we just ask you to continue to pray uh, that we do the will of Allah King and that we are willing to do the things that pertain to the kingdom because the world as we know it is changing and we have to be ready all right Miss Bukha we um we're just thankful and once again we thankful we're thankful for Bina who read our website for Kiki that gave us our email address and my Isha that did uh, help me in my reading uh, it's always good to have support and help so Miss Baka uh, continue to study and read and we look forward to seeing you on the 